So my original idea for the skit was to do a little quick parody of I'm Blue but with Ultramarine. And uh, then I realized this video would be so copyright claim it'd be ridiculous. So instead, let's just play that royalty free awesome theme song. Today we are taking a look at the Winsor & Newton Ultramarine ink. Now guys, I have to say right off the back that Winsor & Newton has probably made my favorite non-acrylic ink. I absolutely loved using their Indian ink and it's one of my favorite reviews and favorite illustrations I've done this year. So very happy about that. And I thought, you know what, I really like this shade of blue. I'm going to pick it up and give it a shot. And I actually do have the box this time. Uh, last time I didn't, but you know what, things have changed and we actually are doing a little more confident this time. I do love the illustration, something I didn't get to mention last time is that they have these very nice little illustrations on the box, which just, it's that little extra bit that they don't have to do, but I really appreciate it. And you can just open the box and pull out the inkwell. One thing that did make me laugh is the illustration on the actual inkwell. It's just quite a bit different on the coloring compared to the one in the box, so I thought that was interesting. That wasn't the case with the other one we took a look at, so very interesting. Now this inkwell sells for on average $5.99 to $4.99 depending on where you go, and I know what you're thinking, that much for this little thing of ink. Well, I gotta say that the Indian one was definitely worth it. It was such a good high quality little thing of ink. Uh, one thing I didn't mention last time was I do really like the inkwell design. I think that stands out among the shelf because it's square instead of circle. It's very thick glass too, so I feel like I can have Actually drop this without having it shatter. I'm not going to drop it, but that's just kind of the feel I get from how thick this glass is. And then it just has a plastic cap that you can pull off. Again, this thing does not have an inkwell, which I personally do like because that makes it using dip pens and brush is much easier because you don't have to worry about holding or storing the ink well so that you don't get ink everywhere. You can just unscrew it, put that upside down, and you're done. Now, as always, we will be testing our ink in our Batman sketchbook. So, as always, when we're testing our inks, we do use a dip pen. We have two different kinds we use. On top of that, we use a brush. I did get a brand new rag, so that's good. And we have our cup of water, so let's put this ink to the test. Oh, I like that. I like that shade of blue. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous. Very smooth. Very, very smooth. I really like this shade of blue. Very nice. I am noticing that it starts out darker on this side, and then as you work the ink, it slowly gets lighter. and create a very nice natural gradient. So that could be a problem if you want very consistent line. However, I think we could use that to some really cool effects. That is nice absolutely love the color of this ink. It looks phenomenal. Now, I mentioned how my favorite colors are red, black, and blue many times on the channel before, but it's a shade of blue like this that's almost like this royal blue that just, ah, I love it. It just captures my attention. That and blood red. Blood red, ah, oh, just so good. Let's try our quill nib. Very nice. Absolutely love that. Ah, so smooth, so smooth. Guys, this is a good ink. The coloring is great. Wow, it's still going. Okay, now it's done. So, when you first make your line, unlike with our normal dip pen, it started out a little darker and then got lighter. I mentioned that before. With the quill nib, it's more consistent on the lighter side of that. So for more consistent lines, you would probably use a quill nib opposed to the actual normal dip pen nib. So that's very interesting. Let's see how it's consistent with the actual brush, because I'm really curious about that. Ooh, I like that. I like that. It's very consistent. I'm noticing a few streaks. On camera, that doesn't look bad at all. In person, there's a few little streaks. I really like this. I'm going to try wetting my brush for now and then using it because I just went dry brush. Ooh, that's nice. And I like how if I don't spread it out as much, it's a much deeper blue. And as you can see, I spread out, it gets lighter. And unlike black, usually when you do inks with it, you can water it down to create like grays for like ink washes. Here I'm noticing we could get some color tonal variation, which is really nice. So I'm very excited to start working with that. Guys, this ink is very, very nice. I love this shade of blue. And on top of that, I absolutely love how smooth it is. Again, Winter & Newton has really made such a solid ink. Now, I know what you guys are thinking is why use colored ink? Now, most of the time colored inks use really with calligraphy, but you 
you can do some coloring with it. And I actually have a really cool idea to do an illustration just using this blue ink. So for today's drawing challenge, we're going to be doing an illustration of a merman, taking advantage of the amazingly gorgeous blue ocean tone of the ink. And I think that's going to be really fitting because not only is one of my favorite aliens from Ben 10 of Rip Jaws, my absolute favorite being Upgrade, but when I first started to actually steer this channel more into art-based content, I actually was illustrating a lot of sea mer creatures for a card game I was developing at the time. And this kind of feels like I'm going to be going to my roots on the channel. So I think that'd be really fun to do. Only going to use this ink right here. So I'm not even going to use fine lines, nothing, just only going to use this ink. On top of that, the tools I'll be using are my two dip pens, my normal dip pen and my quilt dip pen. And I'll also be using my brush, probably other brushes than just this one, but we'll see. Roll that super time lapse. And we're done, guys. This piece took about an hour 15, not long at all, and I thoroughly enjoyed the process of inking it. It was a fun little treat to do, and guys, I really recommend Windsor & Newton. This is their second ink that we've looked at, and guys, just like the first one, it knocked it out of the park. In fact, I would have to say that the Windsor & Newton Indian ink is actually currently my favorite non-acrylic ink. I enjoy it that much, and their ultramarine variant does not disappoint. It is such a fun shade of ink to use. It's a beautiful shade of blue. I love how with the pigment, you're actually able to layer it to get like heavier shades of blue and lighter shades of blue. Really awesome. On camera, it actually appears to be a lot lighter than what it is in person. In person, it's much darker, but I'm going to try and find that happy balance. So when I do make this available on my art station account, right, $1 digital download in the description down below, shameless plug is shameless. Either way, I love the dark blue and I love the light blue on camera. I'm really am hooked at how good the quality is on these products. Uh, kind of like how I love Prisma and their quality of stuff. Same thing here. They're just making a lot of great stuff and I really, really like this ink. So if you guys need to do some blue inking, heavily, heavily recommend using the Winter Newton Ultramarine ink. You will not be disappointed. It is a smooth, fun ink that has gotten in a solid 9 on my scale of 1 to 10 because it is just that high quality. So let me know what you guys think in the description down below. Let me know what you guys think of my artwork. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Fun stuff like that. And on top of that, like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to your channel for more art animation based content. You know the whole YouTube shabam. You guys have a wonderful day. And remember, I'm J. Rod Balbrow Productions. I draw power and my own soul.